Hello there, welcome. I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is going to be a moss pull collection video. You guys may recognize this wall of pulls behind me. Some of them are missing and it's because I am currently in the process of taking them to the shower, hosing them off, and cleaning this area. I like to do that once a month because it's a lot of work to move all of these big poles. I have a lot of other poles, not only in this room, but I have a few out of this room. So I figured today would be the perfect time to show you my entire moss pole collection. Even I don't know how many moss poles I currently have, but we will figure that out by the end of this video. I do have a moss pole playlist. It has about 30 videos in that playlist. So I will make sure to link my playlist down below. I have several videos on some of my moss poles that have pictures of what they look like when they first started and compared to now. Some of them have been through two chops now. I'm getting ready to do a third chop on one of my moss poles. Uh, some I've recently chopped and some like are long overdue for an extension. I have a lot of moss pole maintenance to do coming up still. So yeah, I don't really want to go too much back into history because I feel like, yeah, that would make for an extremely long video. It is going to be a long video, so be prepared. I have a lot of polls. So we are going to get started with our first one. This is a Epipremnum gestiana. It's a like type of pothos you may know it as. And this one is a little bit more uncommon or rare. I guess it's harder to find. I started this one from a trailing basket. It's been on a pole for a little while. It's been a little bit of a slower one to kind of start climbing, but those leaves are just incredible. The variegation, I just can't explain the color on this plant. I would say she's about four feet as far as the moss pole height goes currently, but she's probably only climbed a little over two feet. You can see the bottom, all the original cuts. I have two that are growing at the same pace, which is very unusual because my moss poles tend to uh, one vine tends to climb and grow really tall and big before the rest of them catch up. So it is interesting that two are climbing on this one roughly at the same pace. When this one gets to be the size of my Marble Queen, I know I'm going to be obsessed with her. See, so yeah, the color on her is very beautiful. Definitely one of my favorite up and coming poles and I can't wait for this one to climb. I absolutely love Epipremnum. You may notice I have a lot of Epipremnums that are climbing and I can't wait to share them with you all. But yeah, she's definitely one that I am going to love even more once she starts growing and getting bigger leaves. This is my Monstera Adansonii. This is my head compared to some of these top leaves. Like they're huge. Do you see that? It's really hard to show you in full. I'm gonna give you a different angle. Uh, this one has been on a pole for about two and a half years, I would say. It's been through two chops. I did film both videos and I do have them on my channel. It's just absolutely crazy how much this plant has grown. It's working on a new leaf up top. It's starting to unfurl since I watered it. It's definitely one that's a little bit more finicky. It doesn't like to be underwatered. Uh, they get very droopy and angry. They're not as forgiving <laughs> with underwatering. So I try to be consistent and not let this one get as dry. This is definitely one that has been with me for a while and I truly do love this one and I don't feel like I could not have this plant just because it's sentimental in a way that it was with me for so long. So definitely one of my favorite in tried and true moss poles. Next up is Monstera dubia and yeah, she's tall. It's really hard to show you <laughs> how tall she is. So this one actually is a newer moss pole plant. I got this in January as a cutting, or not as a cutting, as a small plant on a wood plank. I do have a video where I put her on this very pole and she was only uh, probably to like right here at the bottom and the rest of this is all new growth. She has not fenestrated yet. Uh, she kind of wraps around the pole a little bit. Uh, she's going to be reaching the top, you know, probably in the next couple months, I would say. 
and yeah, I don't know what to do with her. I'm hoping that she is just rooted in there okay. <laughs> Next up is this one here. It's a little bit of a smaller moss pole and it is overdue for an extension. As you can see, she's climbing off the pole. So I need to do that ASAP. I'm a little behind on some extensions. This is a Pothos, I believe it's a Pearls and Jade. I honestly feel like Enjoy and Pearls and Jade look very similar. Uh, I know that Pearls and Jade have more green on the white speckling, which some leaves look like but then some leaves on it look like a Enjoy. So maybe I have a mixed pot because I know the Enjoy has more just solid white pieces. So I don't know, you'll have to let me know what you think if that's a Enjoy to you or a Pearls and Jade. So she is on a small grow pole by Thick Leet, one of their smallest, it is their smallest pole. And that's how much she's extended off. And kind of see. Yeah, I saw a big plant of this at a plant shop before and I said, I told myself, yes, I am gonna have a pearls and jade climb up on a moss pole because they are beautiful when they get those big leaves. She's climbing pretty fast. I just, again, I am just overdue for an extension so I can let her keep getting big leaves. So when I go to extend her, she's currently on two of the small. They're really short. They only come to like here. Um, so I'm probably gonna add another two. Uh, layer so that I can get her climbing more and then at that point uh, these poles aren't as steady so I might have to chop her after that but we'll see I'm gonna try and let her climb as much as I can and then I will go to chop her but yeah pearls and jade I put her on a pole I think around was it December something like that so she hasn't been climbing for too long uh, but she's doing well. She has a lot of roots inside the pole. Let's see. All the roots inside. So yeah, another epipremnum cutie plant that is climbing because I love them. And I'm excited for this one to get bigger. I love Syngonium Albo. This is one of my only Syngoniums that is currently climbing. I do want to do another poll of Syngonium climbing with the rest of my varieties that I have. I want to do like a combo poll and have them climb. But Syngonium Albo is my favorite Syngonium because I just love the white variegation. She's beautiful. And I do have uh, several videos actually on my Syngonium Albo. I started it on a wire pole. It grew to the top of a wire pole last summer in here. And uh, it was just one long vine. So I propagated it and chopped it back. And I do have a recent video earlier this year where I did that. And I have six vines on the large grow pole. And this is the growth that I have gotten. Cause when I did that, the cuts were like down here. Uh, so this is all new growth that I've gotten. And I love how full and bushy it looks now. Here's a closer look at the back side of the pole. You can kind of see all of those aerial roots in there. And yeah, I'll just have a very tall pole of Syngonium Albo. The leaves haven't gotten much bigger. I think it's more or less just for climbing support. So I feel like a pole isn't necessary for these guys. In my experience, they haven't really benefited from a pole, but besides just climbing. I will be back with my next pole shortly. I want to give Luna some attention and I will be right back. It's hard to believe this is a Cebu Blue. Isn't that crazy? I think it's crazy. It's insane. She's huge and I just love her. It's taken, I would say about a year and a half, not quite, to get this big. Uh, but yeah, those big leaves are worth it though. Like my hand, Cebu Blue, crazy. <laughs> Look how small those leaves are on the bottom. And then as she climbed, she has just grown away. It's gonna be hard to make out some of these top leaves just because she's really close to the grow light. It's gonna be very backlit in a way. She's humongous. Look at that. And that's how thick her vine is getting. It's getting pretty thick. 
and where she's climbing off the pole here. This other vine is right here. It hasn't started fenestrating yet, but I have probably like maybe six or seven or eight total vines inside a potted that had started climbing, which is absolutely crazy. I find Cebu Blue to be just a little bit more sensitive to underwatering. I get some yellowing. I have lost some leaves kind of in the middle down there and towards the bottom. It's just insane to see the size difference. I don't know. I just feel like it's so crazy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is my Cebu Blue. The more poles we take out of here, the more bare it gets. It's so weird taking them all out. Next up is Philodendron Mykins. This was one of my original poles that I did. There was like six poles that I had at the old place that I had started. It went through one chop, but I ended up redoing that pole. So technically I think it's been through two chops. Uh, if my memory serves me right, I completely took her off of the plastic. She had grown to the top and redid it and added all the cuttings onto a wire pole. So she is about five and a half feet of a wire pole and she's mostly all on the front. So I don't really have too many. I do have several on the back that are growing. I have already started to try and bend the vines back down at the very top. Um, I'm not going to chop and extend this one anymore. I'm just going to trail down and let this one get full and fluffy and bushy. So uh, that is my plan with this one. And I love my kins. I'm going to show you this leaf up close. She is gorgeous. This is the Epiprimidum panatum albo, another Epiprimidum. It fenestrates fairly quickly. Uh, I had mine for a while as just a small plant. I propped it multiple times and ended up sticking it on a pole. Some of the leaves on the bottom are quite small and I do have several vines in here growing. I think I have a total of three now. I did have one more, but for some reason that one wasn't doing well and I had to end up taking it off. But she's starting to grow bigger and I have some more variegation on the newest leaf. I was a little worried it was a little more green than I wanted. I do have a strand on this side that's a little bit more variegated as well as on that side, but this main one was mostly um, kind of green. It was giving me really dark green. Uh, but I'm happy with this newest leaf. I'm obsessed with it. A very easygoing plant, loves to climb, and is just absolutely gorgeous. I have no words. I've always loved this plant. I've always loved the split leaves, the variegation, and this leaf is everything. Seriously, one of my favorites. Next up is one of my faves. It is a Monstera Esqueleto. Ugh. I got it as an import last summer as like a rehab and I rerouted it, started it on a pole almost immediately and I love her. It just gave me a really big leaf and I'm going to need to extend it again soon, but seriously, uh, it's just such an amazing plant and I highly recommend a monster Escaletto. I love it. I adore it. It's just beautiful. The big leaves the fenestrations, everything about it. Uh, I'm obsessed. This is the newest leaf. Look at that. It's giving me another one here too. This is a huge leaf compared to my hand. It is monstrous. I'm not sure what happened to that one. It stayed kind of wonky looking, uh, which is a little weird. I don't know what happened with that one. So I definitely want to extend it sooner than later because uh, I waited a little too long to extend it and you can see it kind of gave me a big little gap here. So I am going to extend very soon and I have it on Thickly's large grow pole. I have it on three layers currently so I'm going to do a fourth and it seems pretty pretty steady. I don't have anything in here to support it. I am really a fan of the large size. I just feel like it's the most stable out of all of them so far. And I'm excited to, yeah, add another extension. I'm wondering if I can get five. That is going to be my plan. I'm going to see if I can get five. This leaf is everything. Just gorgeous. Next up 
Next up is my most recent chop project is my philodendron varicosum. It's doing really well for the most part. Now in that video, um, I did mention, or I did add two cuttings in. I added a cutting in uh, right here, which is a little droopy. Also a little droopy right here, which I figured it would have been uh, just because they weren't really rooted. I just watered this plant too, so it's very drippy. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's really shocked that much. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get a new leaf soonish. I have two vines that are that are growing. Uh, but yeah, I love this plant. I have it on a medium thickly pole and it's currently on four layers. So I have quite a bit of room uh, at the top there for it to grow. I'm excited to see if I can get some larger leaves on this plant. It's a beautiful phyllo. It's a little bit finicky. It's one of my most difficult plants in my collection. It took a while to get to this point. Uh, but now that I'm at this point, it's doing well. It just, it took a while to get here. So if you have one and you've been struggling with it, don't give up because it'll get there. You just have to have patience. I had to restart this plant like two other times. So this is technically my third time growing it. So you can do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I love the leaves and the backside and the fuzzy petioles. It's such a beautiful plant. Next up is this little cutie here. I've shown and talked about this plant a lot on my channel. I featured it in a lot of favorite videos and I have another new leaf coming in up top. This is a philodendron sword roy. I love, 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 love this plant so much. It's so beautiful. I love the color, the shape. I love the compactness with how it's growing. The spacing is a little bit tighter, which I love the more bushy look to plants. I don't like it when the internal spacing starts to stretch out and then you have like a leaf and then like a long space and another leaf. I like them compact and bushy like this. So I adore this plant for that reason and it's beautiful and gorgeous and so easy going. I have it on just one layer of a thickly pole. This is the medium size. It's attaching and growing in to here very well. Very beautiful philodendron. I can't say enough good things about it. And I highly recommend if you do not have one because it's just, it's just gorgeous. I can't wait for it to get bigger. So I adore this one. I can't wait for it to grow more. It's so beautiful, so gorgeous, and I just love it. The next set of moss poles I'm gonna share with you are the ones that I have in my Ikea cabinet. And sorry if it feels a little bit more echoey in here without all these giant poles. <laughs> uh, before I do my other three big ones, uh, they're uh, dripping wet right now, so I'm gonna let them dry <laughs> before I share those. So the four that I have in my Ikea cabinet, uh, the first one is this one here. This is a white knight philodendron right here. It's on, they're all on thickly poles. Uh, one is on the, medium 2.0, two are on the medium 3.0, and then one is on the very small one. Uh, this one has been doing very well since I put it on here. It has a lot of roots inside. White knights don't really need a pole, but uh, it's doing very well. I even have roots coming out of the top of it, like right here. <laughs> and I have a new leaf coming in right there. I found this one at the big box store and it has like a couple leaves with some like white on it, uh, but not a ton of white on mine. I have another like new leaf here with some white. So I'm hoping it eventually gives me some good color. Uh, it's in my cabinet under pretty bright light. So I don't really think it's the light. It's just probably the genetics of this particular plant. But I'm excited to let this one keep growing. Again, I wish it was more variegated, but that is okay. It is very beautiful and it's very happy and has climbed very well. This one is very drippy as well. Uh, I did this one and the other one I'm gonna show you. They were my most recent poles that I did, my new poles. This one is a philodendron majestic. And I won't go into too much detail on these because I talked about them more in that video. And uh, I've had this plant for a little while. I had rot and I had to redo it on a moss pole. 
Uh, I had to reroute it and I just put it on a thickly pole. I have a total of two vines and it seems to have not shocked at all. It's, it's fine ever since I took it out of moss and put it on here. It's very drippy. <laughs> Uh, the new growth is maybe wanting to push out, actually. I have one on the side that might start, uh, oh my gosh, just let it drip a little bit. <laughs> uh, it might start pushing out soon, but I'm excited for the Majestic. It's the hybrid of the Sorderoi that I showed you uh, before this and then the Varicosum that I showed you before this. Majestic leaves are beautiful. And the back side of the leaves are stunning. And let me show you up close what the leaves look like. It's a very beautiful philodendron. So I'm excited for this one to climb. I think it's gonna do very well. Next up is one that was kind of a rehab. Uh, I did it in that same video. It's showing a little bit of stress since I potted it up. It's the philodendron serpents. I have a little bit of yellowing that started. I think I probably let it get too dry. I just watered these, they were, they were a little dry. I probably should have checked and watered my cabinet yesterday. <laughs> Today's Friday, so a uh, whoops. Uh, sometimes if I'm a day late on my cabinet, my plants take a little bit of a hit because it's so warm in there. It's 81 degree, 81.7 degrees Fahrenheit in there right now with the grow light. So it gets very hot and the plants in there dry out very quickly. Uh, yeah, it's not as humid in there cause it's not weather stripped. It's only 60s, 61 right now. And it's only like 49 or 50 in my plant room. So with the carpet out of my plant room, it's not as humid. So I'm definitely going to break out my humidifier and start running it, especially as the uh, colder weather gets here. Cause yeah, I can tell a difference with it not being as humid. I feel like I've noticed more stuck leaves and stuff on some of my plants. And of course my poles and everything dries pretty quickly when it's not as humid. All right, next up is going to be a philodendron, a uh, silver sword or hast hastinum, hast hastinum, something like that. It's starting to get a little bit bigger. I have two vines in here. It has a beautiful silver blue color. Very beautiful. Uh, I've gotten a little bit of yellowing on the lower leaves. I think it's just underwatering stress. I have this plant grown to uh, top of a stake and the whole thing started yellowing for some reason. I don't know what happened. So I hope this isn't the case with this one. I hope it doesn't uh, give me yellow leaves. I hope that it grows well because the color is beautiful, but I'm excited for it. If this one doesn't do well, like if this one ends up yellowing or stressing, then I, I don't think I'm going to try again with this plant. I don't know if I just had an unhealthy one or if that's just common with these plants. I'm not really sure, but I mean, I love the color, but I'm not really in love, love with this plant, I guess. Seems to be doing okay for the most part, but yeah, if something were to happen, then I wouldn't be too upset. So that is a philodendron silver sword. Next little cutie is one that I just am so looking forward to. Uh, when it gets to be the size of my like epiprimidum penatum back there, I'm gonna be obsessed. It's this little cutie right here. Many of you guys know this plant. Uh, from that unboxing that I did. It was just a cutting. It didn't have any growth yet. And this was November. So this is the plant now and it's starting to climb. This is the Epipremnum panatum marble variegated. It is beautiful. Look at how gorgeous. This is actually one of the bigger leaves right here that it gave me. These two here, they have like a tiny little bit of hole starting. <laughs> it's such a pretty plant. That color, that marble variegation. It is stunning. It's doing and climbing so well already. I have it on a small grow pole by Thickly. So very excited, very happy. I think I have four no nodes total that ended up activating on this plant. So I have four that are growing. 
so I'm super excited. Definitely one that I just cannot wait for. Okay, at this point, you might need a little bathroom break, a little snack break. We're probably about halfway through, I would say. So we still have a good ways to go. Uh, lots more poles. <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's continue. Next is the Florida Beauty. Look at those leaves. Aren't they gorgeous? I have this one on a small thickly. It's two layers currently. It's growing well. It's definitely like throw some all green leaves and then it's throw some very variegated leaves. It's very interesting. The newest one is all green and it's smaller. The one before that was mostly green. So I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> I hope it's not reverting. Uh, but it did give me some pretty variegated leaves here in the middle. This one over here was a half moon, but then part of it started yellowing. Uh, so I had to cut some of that away. So we'll see, crossing our fingers. I have another Florida Beauty that did revert. It was a cutting I got a long time ago and I grew it out and only the original leaf was variegated on it. I even cut it back and it propagated the entire thing and nothing grew back variegated. So I'm hoping this one doesn't revert. It makes me a little nervous that I had it almost green and then an all green leaf. So hoping the next one is variegated. Uh, I'm crossing my fingers. It's hard to tell sometimes on the stem if there, there is still stem variegation. So I feel like I'm still okay. So definitely some interesting genetics on this one. Next poll is a Amedrium medium silver. Look at those leaves on this plant. Aren't they beautiful? It is stunning. This one uh, was a little bit more of a stubborn one for me to grow because uh, it was giving me long runners. I had to chop it and then uh, I put it on a different pole, which was a medium thickly. I had it on a wire pole and I just got runners and I cut it back and I ended up transferring it to this one. And I cut this one uh, here and then, it, and then it's activated, I think, two growth points since chopping it back. So I love the way that it's growing now. I hope it doesn't give me any more runners anytime soon. I'm doing my best to keep this plant as hydrated as possible. I'm trying not to let the pole go dry. Sometimes it still happens though, uh, but yeah, it's very beautiful. I love the silvery color, the texture and everything. It's such a beautiful plant. Uh, but yeah, uh, probably one that is a little bit more finicky in the sense of the runner thing. If you don't like plants that do that, this one definitely needs some kind of support. I have several thickly poles coming up next. This plant here, I call just self-destruction. Look at this plant. <laughs> it's all white. This is a variegated Monstera adansonii, and clearly it just doesn't want to live. I mean, I have a couple leaves left that have green, and it just keeps producing white leaves. I was so looking forward to having this plant. I paid so much for this cutting from Botanica's. When I ordered it, it was like my housewarming gift to myself when I was like, done with the move and, and we sold our house and packed up and all the moving stress, I treated myself to this cutting right after we moved. I'm like, I am, I love monsteras. I love variegated plants. I had no idea that these plants were this finicky. So if you're ever considering getting one, I would highly suggest to reconsider. It's not gonna be able to sustain itself. I tried to, well, I chopped this plant in multiple places down here at the bottom and it activated several nodes to grow. Um, they clearly grew all white and they have since browned. I have another one in the middle that is all white that activated. Uh, so yeah, I basically did not do this plant any justice by trying to chop it because everything that came back in is coming back in white. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna let it do uh, what it's gonna do, one vine up this pole. It was doing like a green 
leaf, a white leaf, one with green on it, all white, one with a little bit of green on it, all white. But now like the taller it gets, it's like mostly all white on both sides now. Uh, so yeah, I don't know what my plan is with this plant. I, again, it just keeps white and then the lower leaves just keep browning off. So yeah, not my favorite plant. Next up is another Monstera that I just adore and love. This is a Monstera obliqua, obliqua, Peru, I guess. It's beautiful. Look at it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Uh, again, it's been through a lot with me. It was another Botanica's purchase. It suffered leaf melting where it basically just dropped all of its leaves. They just melted off. If you touched it, it just disintegrated basically. And it was down to one leaf. I grew it back. My cat ate it and then had to regrow it back again. And this is the plant that I have now. I had a runner which I cut off and since I cut it off and extended it, it hasn't given me any more runners. In fact, this entire half is all growth that I've gotten since chopping it. It's activated several nodes. I even have some smaller ones down here in the middle that are growing, like right here, which is kind of cool. And I even have some newer leaves coming in on the bottom still. And then all of this is new growth, which is just crazy. I love the leaves on this. They're very unique. Uh, it hasn't really been that stubborn for me to grow. It's doing really well. I feel like I don't give it any special care. The only thing that helped this plant, I feel like, was just cutting that runner off. And ever since then, I've gotten this beautiful growth. I love this plant. I love Monstera. This is definitely one of my favorites right now. So... Uh, yeah, I feel like if you get one, you are taking that risk and the fact that it is going to give you runners like the Amedrium. But if you can get it supported and attached early on and make sure to keep the pole moist, uh, I feel like you have a better chance of growing this one. But it honestly hasn't been that finicky at all. And yeah, I love it. <laughs> Next up is a philodendron. This is a philodendron silver stripe. And this one is on uh, two layers of thick leaves pole. And again, I feel like this kind of heart leaf philodendron, the leaves don't really size up that much, at least in my experience. It's just more for support. It's like a bushy climbing plant. Um, and I love it. I think the leaves are beautiful on it. Here's a closer look at that uh, striping in the middle. It's very beautiful. Now I have the Philodendron Brazil and I don't have a cream splash and I don't have the Gabby. The Gabby's more white, which I don't know if I ever want those in my collection. I feel like I'm pretty happy with this one and the Brazil. I don't feel like I would need those. Oh, and then there's the Rio, which is very beautiful too. They just have very similar, but uh, the markings are a little bit different between them all. But I love the silver stripe. I think it's beautiful. It's more elongated uh, at the tip. Um, but again, not necessary for a moss hole. I feel like in a trailing basket, it would still look beautiful and cascade down. I had this one initially in a basket, but it was giving me tiny wonky leaves. So I decided to let it climb. I love it a lot better climbing like this. And yeah, I'll probably just extend it to a third layer and at that point, I'll probably cut it back. I don't know how tall eventually I'll want uh, this one to be, but it's very beautiful and I love the way that it's growing right now. Next up is another climbing philodendron or a heart leaf. It's the Heteraceum, but this is the Variegata. And I love this plant. I think the variegation is beautiful on it. And again, it's another one that I feel like hasn't really sized up on a pole, but uh, I just love it climbing and I just think it's such a beautiful plant. Very happy with it. This started from just a cutting. I've propagated it many times and to see this plant on this pole how it is just makes me so happy. So this is exactly like my silver stripe. I'm just letting it climb up and it's currently on two. So I'll probably add a third one on soon because it is reaching the top of this one. 
and then I'll let it climb to the top of three. And then at that point, I'm not really sure what I'll do. Maybe I'll take some cuttings. Um, I don't really feel the need to like chop and get rid of the base or anything. Uh, I feel like the variegation does kind of darken over time, like the Just Sienna. And then as the newer leaves, they're a little bit more vibrant and colorful, more variegated. But I love this one. I have the regular green too, but this one I just adore because it's variegated and definitely uh, very happy with it. Next moss pole is a philodendron burl marks fantasy. I almost said flame, but I'm like, wait, no, that's the Monstera flame that I don't have that I want. This one has been in my collection for a while. It started as a single leaf prop. The original big leaf I no longer have. It's kind of struggled a little bit. It gets swanky leaves, which is kind of annoying about it. It had thrips last summer and then I had to end up like starting over with it basically. And I put several cuttings down here uh, on a pole. It's on two layers. There's a gap right here because I accidentally had a wonky leaf. So there's like a missing uh, leaf right there. And this one here looks like wants to be a little wonky, maybe the newer leaf. I like this plant, but I'm not in love with it. It's got these very dark leaves, uh, this color. It's very pretty. Can you see it's very dark looking. Beautiful plant. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I know the leaves can get relatively big because the original propagated leaf was a pretty big leaf. Oh, but I don't know. I'll probably add one more layer on and then I'll figure out what to do with this one. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit more of a stubborn one to grow because it does give those, get those wonky leaves. And as much as I try to keep these poles moist, they dry out all the time. So that's like a hard thing about some of them that if you let them go too dry, uh, they get a bit of annoying uh, with the leaf growth. Uh, I'm going to show you Milano too. That is another annoying one that I have on a pole. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of them are very stubborn. So although this one is cool and unique, I love the leaves and the color. Um, definitely not one of my favorite plants, I would say. Next up is another Upper Premonum. This is a global green pothos. So the global green has a dark green and then a lighter green center with some random spots of white throughout. It's very unique. Uh, I have a few leaves that have that white I'll show you. I would say this is pretty with the dark green and light green, but I feel like there's so many different varieties now like lemon meringue and I'm not going to like get all the different ones I don't think because they are very similar. I've had like the enjoy kind of revert and look like this in a way. Uh, I don't know. I think. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, not my favorite Epipremonum. Um, I haven't really noticed it sizing up too much or anything yet. Uh, that would be cool if I did get some pretty big leaves on this plant because the color's pretty. But probably out of all my Epipremonums, this one's probably my least uh, favorite out of the bunch. But it's still very beautiful. I'm still glad that I have it and that I have it climbing. So who knows? Maybe it'll surprise me. Sometimes I connect with plants at a later date or once they climb and grow or do better for me, then I start connecting with them more. So we'll have to see how I feel about this one in some time. Here's the leaf on it that has the kind of white uh, bit there. It has the light green center. Here's another one here that has that spot of white on it. Yeah, very rooted in the thickly pole. All these ones root so well in here. Oh, I did, I forgot to mention, I did cut this one. So like my Monstera adansonii, the white one, the variegata. I chopped this one in multiple spots because I wanted to create a fuller plant without having to cut it, which it did happen. So I actually cut here. You can kind of see where I cut. And then this here on the side is a new node that is growing in. So it's got these two leaves to fill in the spot here. It has another growth point here that is coming in. 
And then I chopped right here. And this side here is new growth, a new node that's growing since I chopped it. So I completely forgot that I did that. So that is a way to fill your moss pole out is once it's rooted, you could just chop the vine and it'll reroute energy into a new node uh, to fill it out. If you do that, is not letting the pole go dry because if you chop the vine in multiple places only the bottom section is actually rooted in the soil and the rest of your plant is not rooted in the soil so the only roots really are in the moss unless it grows some down into the soil so if you do decide to chop it on the pole i would do your best to keep the pole pretty hydrated until more roots can actually uh, grow all the way down and establish in there because you can see some of them are reaching down into the soil. Uh, where'd they go? It's gonna be kind of hard to see with that glare, but you can see how they're growing down into the soil. So once those grow down in there, they'll get the nutrients and stuff from the soil. Uh, so yeah, I love that this has filled out kind of on its own by doing that. I have a few more poles uh, to show you that are on thickly. And then I'm gonna show you I have five poles that are out of my plant room and then I'm going to show you uh, three of my bigger last remaining moss pole plants. So we are getting through this. Have one, two, three, four, five more thickly poles in here to show you. I think I said three. I have five more to show you. So this is one of five more thickly poles. This is one of my favorite plants. It is a Florida ghost philodendron. I have it on a medium thickly grow pole. I adore this philodendron so much. I'm just so lucky to have such beautiful color on mine. I don't really uh, have that many white looking leaves. They're more of like this beautiful mint color. And I have a new one that just came out. Uh, they can go all white, they can revert and grow very dark leaves or some can be more minty looking. I love the color on mine. I, it's just the most perfect color. Just that mint color is just everything. Let me show you uh, some of those leaves. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? The thing I like about this plant, it's one vine, but the spacing is again very tight like the Sorderoy, meaning the space between the two nodes is shorter, so it's more compact and bushy, which I love about plants. I love it when they're just compact and bushy like this. Uh, so that's the nice thing about this is that I don't have to extend for a very long time still. Even though it looks very full and there's a lot of growth, it's only taken up this much of the pole which is crazy <laughs> because of that spacing. I love this plant so much. It's definitely one of my favorite philodendrons. I really love the Florida Beauty because it's variegated, but I love the Ghost more than the Beauty because the Beauty tends to revert easily and it's very sporadic variegation, whereas the Mint, every leaf is gorgeous on it. I know these guys can revert and stuff too, but I don't know. I just feel like there's some really easy care phyllos and the leaf shape and everything is so unique and so beautiful on them. Out of all the philodendron Floridas, I feel like this one is definitely my favorite and I highly recommend them. They are just so beautiful. This next one is one of my like up and coming favorite apoprimidums. It's a Mandula Pothos Epiprimina Mandula, and it is beautiful. Mine is definitely doing this like weird uh, every other leaf variegation. I'm tempted to cut it, uh, but I don't know. This left side is all pretty and variegated, and this right side is like green, green, and the newest one is green. And I don't know how I feel about that. I want these leaves to get very huge in that beautiful color. I have several vines in here. So once more start to catch up, they uh, will kind of hide some of the green. But since one vine tends to lead for the plant, I'm worried that this main vine is going to not be as pretty because of like one half of it being green. It's just the way that it happened. You, you can't really... 
you don't really know which vine is going to start growing for the plant, you know? So that, yeah, that's the only thing, um, but it's still very beautiful. And here's the leaves up close. Look how beautiful that is. They're so pretty. And all those on the bottom are very beautiful. This is one of my favorite leaves right here because it has like that mint, minty color to it. And then this side is mostly like all green. That one had a little bit of variegation and that one has a little bit in there, but it's mostly green, that newest one. I'm tempted to do what I did with my global green that I showed you is cut this in multiple places and have it reshoot re growth to fill it out more. Uh, we'll see, I'm gonna do an extension to make three layers and I'm gonna let it grow up that a little bit and see what it looks like. But if this continues, I'm probably gonna end up cutting this so it will like reshoot growth to make this more full and variegated. But I do uh, want this to be really big one day, really huge leaves because they're gorgeous. Uh, but so far it's been doing well. I would say it's been on a pole since December and it didn't really grow a lot in a basket, like in a four inch pot. And it really started to take off, I would say, probably a few months after I put it on a pole, maybe like April, it started growing more. Uh, but yeah, it's a very beautiful epipremnum. So I love this one. This one is a Halo Mykins. Uh, I didn't realize at the time that there was a Mykins Aria variegated, which I do want. I want to do it like my big, tall Mykins moss pole. But this is the Halo Mykins and I'm not really a fan of it. <sighs> I had already chopped this plant back once and the new growth that's coming in, a lot of it is reverting back to a regular Mykins. Uh, I did add a strand on the bottom that does have some like Halo looking leaves that are coming in. And it just has a we really weird shape. I had this on the medium grow pole, but I took it off and put it on the small because the vine and stuff is so skinny that I felt like the medium, the medium pole with these small leaves was just very overpowering for this plant. It's currently on three layers and I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it, you guys. <laughs> I want to, honestly, I want to start over with this plant again. It has the white border on the leaves. And here's one here. Uh, it did have some really pretty leaves at one point, but some of those kind of died on it. And you can see that one is very pretty on that. But then I have some that are turning into irregular micans. It's kind of reverted uh, a little bit. It still has a different shape to it, but it's mostly green again. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do once it reaches the top of this. I might chop it back. I might not, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I have it. It is unique and it's different if it maintained the variegation, but since a lot of it is reverting now, I'm just like, do I chop it back again? What do I do? I'm not really sure. So this is kind of like a question plan. I'm not really sure what my plan is with it, uh, but I am glad that I have it. I think it is a beautiful uh, philodendron micans. And it also has, this is a very pretty leaf too. It's like a spot of pink in the middle. Do you see that? Look how pretty is that leaf? So cool. I don't know if I would purchase it if I knew that this was gonna be my plant. At that time, I didn't realize what I was buying. I just saw variegated micans. I'm like, oh, of course I want it. I didn't realize that it was a halo and I didn't realize uh, the growing pattern and stuff with it. That is uh, questionable, my plan. Chai says hi, he's down here rubbing my legs. Hi buddies, what'd you get into? You got an eye boogie. I love it when they start to make air biscuits, air pancakes with their pawpaws. I just think it's so cute. Hi. <laughs> Go on. 
This next plant is not my favorite. <laughs> Uh, this is another one of my hardest plants. It's a philodendron Milano Chrysum, and I have it on three layers of thickly. I'll show you this one kind of from afar at a different angle so you can see it a little bit better. It was imported last summer as a rehab, and it caught some kind of powdery mildew thing, and I feel like it's coming back on this leaf or something fungal. I feel like I'm gonna have to spray it with the fungicide. I feel like Milano Chrysum is very stubborn to grow with those wonky leaves. I've gotten several wonky leaves on it and the newest one is very wonky looking. I don't think I'm gonna add another layer on this. It's currently on three and I do want to hopefully mature it, but I, I think I'm gonna chop it back because right now it's just one long vine, so I might chop it and add it to where I have two growing, and then hopefully the new growth will grow better, if that makes sense. Uh, it's a very beautiful plant, especially when they mature. They're very beautiful leaves. I'll probably end up chopping it back once it reaches the top of this. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my plan with that one. This is a Monstera um, Stanleyana Albo. This actually started from a cutting as well. It's very tall. You guys can't even make out how, oop, how tall it is. I'm starting to get some nice color there on the top few leaves. Of course, one already started browning. The leaves haven't really sized up that much. I would say it's not really one that you would have to do on a pole, just climbing support like a stake would do just fine. There are so, 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 so many roots inside of this pole. It's a little crazy and the leaves are relatively like the same size as the leaves like on the very bottom of this plant. So definitely uh, one that I wouldn't necessarily do on a pole like I was saying. Like if you have a lot of poles and it's not really worth the effort sometimes keeping poles moist, uh, especially if they're not gonna really size up that well. I honestly would just do a stake for this guy, but let me show you what he looks like. Um, I do have this one on four thickly layers, the medium size. Uh, it's very pretty. I got some leaves that have uh, some nice white splotches on it, uh, especially that one's pretty white. And um, kind of up top here, it started growing more variegated leaves, especially that newest one there. It's one main vine, but then I have a total of, I have so many in here. I have another one there. I think I have a total of maybe three or four or a total of five, because there's some shorter ones that didn't really grow. It's kind of like the runt out of the bunch, whichever vines grow the fastest, uh, do the best, and the other ones, uh, they don't really have, the plant doesn't really have any energy for them because it's taking a lot of the energy to keep these bigger vines growing. So the little ones that didn't grow just basically kind of wither away in a sense. It's a very beautiful plant. Uh, I'm glad that I have it because it's a Monstera and I love Monstera, but I wouldn't get the Aria or anything just because I know the growth pattern with this one. And uh, I don't have to have every yellow form and white form or every kind of variety of a plant. Um, I'm definitely, back in the day I would have bought the Aria. I was actually looking at one not too long ago in a plant shop and it was tempting. Again, cause I'm a sucker for variegation, but yeah, I'm not like, not super in love with this one. Um, I did grow it from a cutting, so it's special in that sense, but I could definitely, uh, this could disappear from my collection from my collection and I wouldn't be too upset, <laughs> basically. If more of the leaves were like that, I think I would love it a lot more. Uh, but I still really love it and I'm glad that I have it. I am currently in my dining room. I have three moss poles out here by this window that's in front of me. And I'm gonna quickly show you them. This is the first one. 
This is a epipremnum, but it's a neon epipremnum arium, uh, neon, or I guess a lemon lime. Funny story is this is actually as old as my Marble Queen moss pole. I started these at the exact same time. <laughs> And this is all that she has grown in, I would say, over two years. That just blows my mind how slow this one has been for me. I had it on a wire pole. I did switch it and take it off and put it on this clear one. I did this in a video probably mm, at least three months ago, I think now something like that. I clearly need to add some more moss. It has grown <laughs> way above that. I need to do some extensions and stuff. I am overdue. I have seen this plant with big leaves and it's beautiful because I love the neon. I guess it's just something about it not having um, maybe enough chlorophyll. I'm not really sure. I definitely could give this plant more light 100%. If I had it in my plant room environment, where all my other moss poles are, I think this guy would grow better for me. When I have to bring all of my plants in for the fall season, these poles here, I might just be temporarily housing into my plant room in order to make room for those plants in this corner. So it might grow better in my plant room. Uh, but yeah, it's very beautiful. I love, 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 love the color. And some leaves have that like little blip of green on them. I have a very long trailing neon pothos that I took cuttings of that I started this one from. It just, it's very slow for me. So besides the light issue, I don't really know what else to get this plant to grow. But if it doesn't really grow or doesn't really do anything, then we'll see, I might end up taking it off. But it is very beautiful. I love the neon color. Our next one is a philodendron. This is a Campo Sportswanum, and I currently have it on a three foot wire pole. This is all that it is. I did end up chopping this one and redoing it on my channel. That's why some of the leaves on the bottom are very mature. Do you see that cool shape to them? What I did was, this was technically the top half. It grew to the top of a six foot wire pole, but it was just one vine. The internodal spacing on this plant is very long as well as the petioles. The petioles are extremely long. So this plant growing up a six foot wire pole looked ridiculous. Uh, it was just one skinny vine with very long petioles and leaves. It looked very funny. So I chopped it in half and took the uh, bottom half and hooked it in here with the top half. So I have both parts of my pole on this right now. And it's just now finally, finally starting to give me new growth. This is a new leaf here. I have a new leaf here coming in and here. And then I have some little baby ones on this side. I honestly am not really too much of a fan of it anymore. Um, again, like if it disappeared, I wouldn't be too sad about it. Uh, but it is a very cool, unique leaf shape and color and everything. Like it's a pretty plant. And then when the leaves get mature again, <laughs> they get like that, it's huge. I like the little bunny ear lobes. They kind of lose that shimmer, that vibrance though, when they mature. It's just like a dark green leaf. It's just like a weird leaf shape. So yeah. I will be extending it soon since it's at the top here. And I actually just now realized that that node grew inside. So I don't know how I'm gonna add an extension on. I'm gonna to have to somehow pull that out or just cut the wire here so that I can bring him out so I can slide an extension down. <laughs> that is that guy, Philodendron Camposport Tuanum. Our last pole that's out here in the dining area is one that I did recently. This is a Monstera siltipicana. It's just a regular form that I know of. It's not like in El Salvador or anything. It doesn't get nearly as large of leaves. And you can see mine has already fenestrated. You see the split leaves there? So I recently um, did a chop and I added an extension on. The extension's actually six feet, like this pole is six feet tall. It's on the floor currently, and this is the top of the pole and me. I am five foot, like 10 and a half or so. So this pole is as tall as me. 
and this plant has a ways to climb now. Since I just chopped it, it's just now starting to push new growth. Uh, I had to end up cutting all of the vines. So they'll be a little bit smaller at first. They just have to take a little bit to reestablish and then it will start growing bigger leaves again and ones with like more split leaves. It just started raining. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that is that one. It's doing well since I chopped it. So I'm excited to get it growing again to fill out this entire pole. I have a couple moss poles outside that are two of my older poles. I had started them at the other house uh, a long time ago in 2021. And there are two that I'm gonna take off a moss pole. They're on my old plastic that I used to use. And I just threw them out there at the beginning of, of spring, like in March, and I still haven't taken them off. I've just been watering them. So those are gonna be two poles I will no longer have on a pole. Uh, the one I'm going to do is a trailing basket and just like prop the cuttings all up. And the other one, I don't know what I'm going to do with. It's a shingling plant and I don't really know where to put it or what to do with it. So that one is undecided what I'm going to do with that one. Yeah, it is really coming down out there now. So I'm going to show you my last three poles. They go right in that spot and then we will, uh, yeah, end this video here. These are so heavy. <laughs> uh. This one here is my philodendron glorious. And I will insert some footage of it in full length so you can see it. Cause this is only part of it. So you can't see it all. Uh, I love philodendron glorious and it's one of my favorite philodendrons. I love the pillowy leaves. I just love the velvetyness to them. I love the veining. It is very, very beautiful. I have the Splenda that I'm going to show you next, and they're both hybrids. They are hybrids of the Milano Chrysum. And this one, the Glorious, is with the Gloriosum in Milano. Mine resembles more of a Gloriosum in the overall like veining, leaf shape, and everything. I feel like it resembles it. And the Splenda that I'm going to show you next is with the Varicosum in Milano. Uh, they're much easier to care for, the hybrids. This one climbs slower than my Splenda. My Splenda I already chopped. I chopped, I think, last month or the month before. And this one I have not chopped yet. It's still the original plant. I have the original tiny leaves here on the bottom. I feel like this one resembles the varicosum, even though this one isn't part of the varicosum, and the fact that the nodes are very stubborn to grow into the substrate. So Milano, varicosum, the glorious, the gloriosum, <laughs> the uh, splendid, they're all like, they get stuck leaves, uh, which happens on this one. This one is more thirsty than the Splendid. They would prefer more humidity so that that doesn't happen as much, but also not letting them go as dry. Like if you underwater, I would not let them get to that point or they're going to give you uh, stuck leaves and wonky growth sometimes. So I do my best to try and keep this one hydrated on the moss pole, but it does dry out all the time. So <laughs> uh, yeah, but I really love this one. These leaves are gorgeous and it's definitely one of my favorite climbing phyllos. So yeah, that is my glorious. I'm gonna put her back and then I will show you my splendid. So this one was a recent chop, like I was saying. Let me show you kind of the leaves on that side. It's like a vibrant green color. Isn't that stunning? This is the newer leaf. Look at that. Just gorgeous. Such a beautiful plant. So this one has definitely climbed, like I was saying, a lot faster. It's sized up quicker and it's already at the top of the pole. And I just chopped this one. So my plan is, I think, I don't know if I'm going to be able to add like a foot extension on top. So I don't know. I feel like I'm going to be having to chop this one again soon, which is crazy. 
This is another one that has long internodal spacing that you can see. The space between the nodes is just quite a bit. I love this one because it is such a beautiful philodendron and the leaves are gorgeous. So this is me next to the plant. We're about six feet tall here. <laughs> Again, huge, huge leaves on this plant. They have sized down a little because the ones that were before I chopped were a little bit bigger. So um, I think it just took a little bit of time for it to kind of reestablish. So that's why I don't really want to chop it again. I'm going to try and add a foot extension on top and then I will chop it in half uh, again. <laughs> So yeah, this is Philodendron Splendid. So again, Melanochrysum and Varicosum. This one to me resembles more of a Varicosum uh, than Milano. Very easy going, super fast climber. Uh, can't say enough good things about a Splendid. I adore this one. And here they are side by side. I wanna give you a comparison of them. So you can see the Splendid here and the glorious here. They're very similar, but yet very different. I love them both. Definitely two of my favorite climbing philodendrons. They are gorgeous. Last but not least is Miss Marvel Queen. <laughs> Look at her, such a huge plant. I love her. She is hands down my favorite, favorite moss pole. Whoa, <laughs> look at that. Do you see the newest leaf there? She's a little bit small. She's still hardening though, compared to the other leaves. So that's the first leaf after the chop. She should start sizing up again in some time. Oh, very heavy because I just watered her. Now I did insert this vine on the side, but it's gotten a little stressed and I will kind of show you up close here. But yeah, she is my heaviest moss pole. Uh, let me sit her down. She was doing fine for like the first week and then the other strands started to stress. And I got some yellow leaves on her. These are all from that one strand that I plucked in, which is unfortunate. Look at how gorgeous she is. I have no words to describe the beauty of this plant. Epipremina Marble Queen. Here's another look at the cutie new leaf. It's still growing, still hardening, so I don't know how like small it'll be compared to, you know, these ones here. This is my favorite leaf by far because of that mint color on that plant. So yeah, we're gonna see how that one, how that one does. And this is her bottom half of the pole here on the side. You can see it's a little bit droopy and I do have some more yellowing here. This leaf is yellowing. So I'm thinking this vine shocked, uh, which is very sad. I don't know if I let it get too dry the pole and it just wasn't getting water. I'm really hoping that these leaves make it. I don't want this vine to not make it because that was like the purpose of like filling out this pole as well. So I'm hoping that strand does okay now. I watered some Super Thrive through there uh, a little bit ago with the moss. So this is the top vine, the thickest one. That one is perfectly fine. It is very perky, very happy. It has so many roots inside that it didn't care that this bottom half got chopped off. It was because I added it in and I cut away the base and it wasn't that rooted that I feel like it's having to like abort some of those leaves. So I'm hoping it stabilizes, but if not, I at least have the big vine here growing and I still have these gorgeous leaves. I had to take my hair out of the clip. It was hurting my head. It's been up like that for a while. It made an indention back here. Uh, I have to bring the other half of my poles back in and then that is it. At least all of my poles are watered. I have to water plants tomorrow in here uh, and I'm going to be filming a plant update as well. So you guys will probably see 
either this video first or you're gonna see my plant update first. I haven't decided, uh, but yeah, I have a lot of moss poles and I love them. They truly have been just so amazing for me. They're a joy. They're my favorite thing about my plant room. I love coming in here. I love just looking at my moss poles. I love caring for them. I adore them so much. But if you have any questions with the moss poles, let me know. I will have, you know, my playlist linked down there. It has a lot of my previous pole chops that I've done. And yeah, I will include this video in there. <laughs> my, my moss pole collection has definitely grown since I made my first collection video. I think that was actually over a year ago. So it has grown quite a bit and my plants look a lot different. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my moss pole collection and you just are inspired to maybe create some of your own moss poles. I know so many of you have already started a lot of moss poles and have gotten great growth and i'm so happy for you it just they bring me so much joy so i just hope that they do the same for you so thank you guys so much make sure you give this video a thumbs up for me and leave me a comment down below and i will talk to you guys later